Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to Biology Essentials, video 43. Uh, in this chapter, or in this podcast, I'm going to talk about major cellular organelles, what they are, and what's the most important things that you should remember about them. But what we tend to do is we oversimplify the cell. In other words, you've learned since you were in seventh grade about all the parts of a cell, but what you don't understand is how complicated and how amazing it is. And so I'm recommending this video. It's called Inner Life of the Cell. It's like five minutes long. I'll put a link to it on YouTube here. Um, but what it, it is is a group at Harvard who tried to um, use computer modeling to show you what a cell really looks on the inside. And so this right here is a motor protein that will literally walk, transport vesicles around in a cell. On a tr it's amazing to see how active it is inside a cell, and we tend to not do service to that. So please watch that video and then come back. Um, so in, in this concept map, it's a little bit different than the other ones that I've done. I decided to start right here at the nucleus, which is kind of the control center of the cell. In other words, it's got the information, the blueprints, and it's also gene control. It's telling other parts of the cell what to do. So if we work outward from that, on the right on the outside of that, we have the ER, or endoplasmic reticulum. We have both smooth and rough ER. Now, the rough ER is rough because it has little ribosomes on it. So what do ribosomes do? Those are going to be where we produce proteins. That's the site of protein synthesis. The rough ER gives us a lattice where we can actually do that and we can make different constituents of the cell, parts and chemicals that are going to be used throughout the cell. Before we keep going with the rough ER, the smooth ER is really responsible for making lipids. It's also responsible for breakdown of toxins, but it's going to make lipids. And remember, almost all the parts of the cell are going to be made up of lipids. So smooth ER, super important. So some of the ribosomes float around out here, but some of them are going to be found right on the rough ER. And so they're going to make proteins. Now those po proteins will be trapped in uh, transport vesicles brought to the Golgi complex. Um, from there they can go to different parts of the cell or outside the cell. It's also where we produce lysosomes and lysosomes are important in breaking down material when it's not used. Another portion of especially plant cells is the vacuole. Vacuole, its importance is in storage. Um, for example, all plant cells have a central vacuole. It's going to allow them to regulate their amount of water. And then I put these two over here and, and, and they both deal with energy. So these are the mitochondria and the chloroplast. Remember, mitochondria are found in all eukaryotic cells. And remember, we're talking about eukaryotic cells. The moment you ever hear me talked about uh, eukaryotic, otic, missing an O, the moment you hear me talk about organelles, you know we're talking about eukaryotic cells. So all eukaryotic cells have mitochondria. It's how we make ATP. But then plant cells are going to have, or, or producers are going to have chloroplasts. And that's so they can make sugar, so they can use it by their mitochondria. So let's kind of get to each of those. Start with the ribosome. So where is the ribosome made up of? Well, maybe better yet to talk about what it's made up of. So this right here is the ribosome. It's from a, a bacteria called Thermus thermophilus. And so the blue things in this picture right here are going to be um, proteins. And the brown part is going to be a continuous piece of RNA called ribosomal RNA. And so it's made up, ribosomes are made up of two parts. They're made up of proteins, and then they're made up of uh, RNA. And so those two parts together are synthesized in the nucleolus, which is going to be found in the nucleus. And what you essentially get are two subunits. So you're going to have a small subunit, and then you're going to have a large subunit. And then what goes through the middle is going to be messenger RNA. And so what are we doing here? We're doing translation. We're translating the message of the messenger RNA to a protein. Uh, and so where does this take place with ribosomes? It could take place right in the cytoplasm or it could take place on the ER. So what is the ER? ER is the endoplasmic reticulum. It's usually attached right here to the outside of the uh, of the uh, nucleus. So it's a membrane that folds upon itself. It's going to have ribosomes that sit right on that. So we can actually synthesize proteins and those proteins end up going to the inside. So these little green dots here would be uh, showing proteins or, or bits of proteins that are put together. Um, this is what it looks like under a microscope. You'll find that there's also smooth ER. Smooth ER doesn't have um, ribosomes on the outside. Mostly is where we synthesize lipids inside the cell. Um, but function of the ER is to kind of give us a lattice so we can build things. And so if we're talking about the cell as a factory, this is kind of the factory floor with the workers fitting on, on the top of it. That's definitely going to be the endoplasmic reticulum. If you go to the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi complex, it was discovered by this man, Camillo 
uh, Golgi, lived in the Austrian Empire, died in like 1926. Um, but he wasn't famous for Golgi uh, complex, that's how we all know him uh, for, but he was really good at staining cells and figuring out the parts of the cell using stains. So you'd use silver, silver nitrate, a number of different stains to figure out how neurons work, nerves work, won the Nobel Prize, but uh, he's most famous for discovering this and he, he used staining uh, features to discover the Golgi apparatus. What's the Golgi apparatus do? Well, in general, it takes information that's produced in the endoplasmic reticulum and then it ships those different parts of the cell. And so I like to think of it as like the UPS of your um, little factory. Material is made in the endoplasmic reticulum, it's moved to the cellular uh, UPS, and then it's going to move on its way either to different parts of the cell or even outside the cell. That's the Golgi apparatus. Um, lysosome is next, and we could actually trace that pathway again. So what, what does the lysosome do? Well, lysosome right here has digestive material inside it. So it's got a bunch of digestive enzymes in it. And what it does is it digests material. And so if we're infected, for example, let's say we catch a bunch of viruses inside of us that lysosome will fuse with those viruses and it creates something called a phagosome so we can break it down. Or this can dissolve uh, a mitochondria that's not functioning or it can even kill cells. And so uh, lysosome I refer to as like the suicide sack. It has enzymes. Where did those enzymes come from? Well, they came from the ER. They eventually went through the Golgi apparatus and a lysosome was Produced. And so lysosomes are really important in breaking down material when it's not needed anymore. And the last two are going to be energy producing um, inside the cell. So the mitochondria we've talked about as far as um, cellular respiration goes. It's got an inner membrane, which is going to be this red portion, uh, or excuse me, the outer membrane, and then it's going to be the inner membrane, which is going to be the yellow membrane here. Uh, that membrane is folded over and over and over again, and so we call this folding the cristae of uh, a mitochondria, these in, inner folds. The outside is really, really smooth, but what you get then is this inner membrane space, which is this space right here. So going back over cellular respiration, where does everything occur? Remember, glycolysis is going to take, out, out, take place outside the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle is going to take place on, on the inside, and then this uh, this electron transport chain is actually going to take place right along that inner membrane. And that space is super important, remember, because we can build up those protons on the inside, make as much ATP as we can. And so the reason this is folded is to increase surface area. If you ever see folding, um, it's to increase surface area. In this case, it's to make more ATP. Uh, and then um, last two I want to talk about are the vacuole, and I lump that in with the plants. Uh, vacuole is going to be mostly for storage. Um, this would be the vacuole, and then the membrane around the outside of it is called the tonoplast. But uh, what does it do? We store material inside that. So every plant is going to have a central vacuole where they put water, and they can regulate the amount of water that they have. But if it's the petal of a plant, they're going to have, for example, um, colors inside here that, that give it the colors of the, of the petal. Or they're going to have nasty chemicals inside their vacuole, so if you eat it, they've got toxins inside there. Um, it's also important vacuoles in, in cell growth as well. So vacuoles, I like to think of them mostly as storage. And then the last one is going to be the chloroplast. Here's a bunch of chloroplasts inside a typical plant cell. And if we ever see a lot of chloroplasts, that means we're doing photosynthesis. Uh, the parts of it that you should know are going to be this membrane right here is called the thylakoid membrane. So this would be the membrane right here. Um, if we have a bunch of stacks of these thylakoid membranes together, we call that a grana. And then there's going to be a liquid portion on the inside. That liquid portion is called the stroma. And so again, going back over photosynthesis, the light reaction is going to take place on that thylakoid membrane. And then that Calvin cycle is going to take place in the stroma. And so the reason we have increased surface area is to absorb more light, because the chlorophyll molecules, remember, will sit right in the thylakoid membrane. Uh, but we're also increasing chemical reactions. So those are the major parts of the cell. There clearly are more, um, but those are the big ones, and I hope that's helpful.